Hello everyone, welcome back to Gloomhaven. Last time we came up here to the Crypt of the Damned and investigated the bend in the Still River. And surviving that, we now have some more experience and some more gold and many more things to do. So let's start with our city encounter for today. In a rare moment of peace, you find yourselves looking out over the dockside and spend a few minutes discussing how the last mission went down. Mercenaries, eh? Says a voice from behind you. You turn to see a young street urchin. I'm sure you think you're pretty tough, but are you brave enough for a real challenge? Wave the child away. They clearly have nothing of interest for professionals like you. Or a challenge? Count us in. Yeah, count me in for a challenge. I knew it. They giggle excitedly and pass you a note. You open it and are scrawled on a few warms. Are you brave enough to face the swarm? And a crude drawing of a building that looks a lot like the sleeping lion. When you look up, the child has gone. Harrow Hive has been added to the map. What's that about? Harrow Hive. Well, if you think you deserve it, side quest. Kill all enemies in all the rooms. Interesting. Not one for right now, I think. What we do want to do, though, is level faith up to three. So we can either now take hidden daggers, attack four, range three, target two, or make self invisible, or duelists advance, move three, attack three, or add two attack to all your enemies this round, targeting enemies adjacent to none of their allies. So we've just received two new ability cards. We have to select one to permanently add to our deck. We can still choose Open Wound from our previous selection of level up as well. Hidden Daggers, attack four, at a range of three, targeting two. Sounds pretty, pretty good to me. And we can make ourselves invisible on demand. Uh, I can't hover over invisible, but that's fine. Or Duelists Advance. Move three, attack three. Add two attack to all of your attacks this round, targeting enemies adjacent to none of their allies. We have a lot of stuff that already benefits from attacking things that are not next to their allies. So I think I'm going to take Hidden Daggers. It does burn itself, which is of some concern. Because if we burn through our hand too quickly, that is not too ideal. So that's throwing knives. Attack two at a range of three, targeting two, but does not burn. This is hidden daggers. Attack four at a range of three, targeting two, burns. So what we'd probably want to do is pull out something that burns so we don't have too much stuff. Though I don't see anything that's a really good candidate for removing we make this also doesn't add any kind of movement apart from the base choice of lower two so we don't want to remove one of our big movements either because otherwise we'll just have no movement cards which would be a problem for us maybe thieves neck of course we can change these up between every fight if we wish to that's not a problem But I think Hidden Daggers is going to be what we add. And then if we want to equip it, we need to unequip something else. Let's unequip Thieves Neck for a while and put in Hidden Daggers, see how that goes. Now what's happening at the Merchants? The Ring of Skulls is now available. Summon a skeleton with 3 HP, 2 movement, 2 attack, not at range, and then discard this card. So that's a new item that's available because we found the blueprints for it, basically, in the last dungeon. It now becomes available in the shop. Uh, 
I think that's all. Uh, oh, we have a perk point available for faith as well. So we don't have enough cash to buy anything, but we do have a perk point. We've already had one consistency. We could take a second consistency if we wished to. Then we'd only have three negative cards in our whole deck. A miss, a minus two, and a single minus one. We can add four plus zeros. That's probably more consistent than removing two negative ones. Replace one negative two with a plus zero. Replace one negative one with a plus one. Replace one plus two. Replace one plus zero with a plus two. Add two plus one and redraws. Add two pierce and redraws. Is that pierce through three shield by the looks of it? Add two poison, add two muddle. Add one invisible, redraw, or ignore negative scenario effects. I think I'm going to go for pierce and redraw. Try and get through some more shields. That sounds fun to me. Do we get perk points every time we complete a mission? I think we must get one perk point each time. And then you only get supplemental ones from um, finishing other things, other battle goals. So the Ruinous Crypt, we can now try and stop the cultists. Objective, kill all enemies in all rooms. Dagger Forest. Things are going to be a bit more difficult now because we now have a higher level for the party, which is going to make the encounters a little bit more difficult, which is fun. I'm tempted to come and find this diamond for Jexera, just for the cash more than anything else. Kill the Merciless Overseer, loot the ornate chest. But there's only a basic set of enemies there. Or we can hunt her down. Enemies, Inox Bodyguard, Living Bones and Living Corpses. Core Quest, Boss, search the warehouse rooms for Jexera. And look, we can look at the inner map of Gloomhaven, which is nice. Well, she hasn't done anything wrong to us yet, so I'm going to go find this diamond. We don't want to change anything else. We did equip hidden daggers. I don't think we need to change any of this stuff. Pretty happy with how that is. So we will travel. We'll get our travel event, of course. Walking a path between a small grove and a steep cliff, you suddenly find yourself facing a massive group of felled trees blocking the road. The placement of the trees seems odd, and you have a wary, suspicious feeling about the whole situation. Clear the trees from the road is best to... Tr is the best way through and will help other travelers or take the time to find a way around the trees. If we're suspicious, we shouldn't spend too much time in this road. It might be uh, an ambush or something. You head into the underbrush and of the grove and get around the felled trees, but it's rough going with the growth is very dense. There are quite a few prickly thorns. Each character starts the next scenario suffering two damage. Well, who knows if the other option would have been better or worse than that. We may never know. Ignoring Archisa's warnings, you head into the diamond mine. Sinister machinations is, of course, a troubling phrase to throw around. But the phrase considerable reward trumps that in a heartbeat. Heading into the damp underground cavern, you were expecting to find a few scraggly vermlings to make easy work of. You certainly weren't expecting a pack of vicious hounds guarding the entrance. Finding this diamond may prove more difficult than originally anticipated. 
Okay, so objective one, kill the merciless overseer. That's the guy in purple, as opposed to the hounds or scouts. Loot the ornate chest. Uh, we can't change our decks at this point, can we? We can. Okay, so we may want to add grab and go and our other loot cards. Use no items during the scenario. Take only long rests during the scenario. Um, I don't see us not using our items, really. So maybe we'll see if we can only take long rests. Have one or more monsters present on the map during the beginning of every round. Allow none of your allies to become exhausted. Odds are Brutus doesn't become exhausted, I think. Have one or more monsters present on the map during every round. I mean, that's probably going to happen as well. And two perk points is better than one. All right, let's just see if there's anything with loot that we want that's much better than what we have. We have loot two on throwing knives. There's loot one on quick hands. And loot one on flink lock. I think we'll be okay. And up here. Attack six, move three, push two. Loot one and move four. Might be what we want. Let's drop balanced measure this fight and take grab and go. And then we will head on out. So, guarded by dogs, we were told about, hound elites and regular hounds. We've just taken two damage each entering the scenario, which we knew was going to happen. And these guys have retaliate. A retaliating character inflicts X damage to any adjacent attackers within range. If a range attack is not specified, then it only applies to adjacent attackers. Multiple retaliate bonuses stack. Well then, I would rather attack at range until we get through this door. And it seems that this whole scenario is only this room and the room ahead. And to finish, we only need to kill the ornate, loot the ornate chest and kill the merciless overseer. So technically we don't even have to kill these things. However, I think trying to get through the door and then having three things trying to attack us from behind is not going to assist us. So we'll focus on trying to get these guys. And we're going to do that at range for now. Hidden daggers attack for four at a range of three. Or throwing knives attack for two at a range of three. Range three. One, two, three. One, two, three. So we're... Not in range of them at the moment. So if we want to hidden daggers, we need to take a step forwards. So that's hidden daggers on top and something else on bottom. Or we could flint lock. On your next four attacks, Targeting enemies adjacent to another allies, add two. Do we have a top? Uh, we have regular bow, don't we? Swift bow, attack three at a range of four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So if we swift bow and single out, we could kill one of these in a single attack, unless they go much faster than us. And then here, we probably want to spare dagger attack the guy in front and warding strength 
to get our defences going. Or retaliate for two and warding strength because I reckon they're going to move quickly, I imagine. Move three, move two, attack a bunch. So warding strength retaliate we do have our potions back then here the plan is on your next four attacks targeting enemies adjacent to none of the allies add two to the attack and then attack for three at a range of four now the elite is moving three one two And these guys are moving two, one, two. So they're not going to be able to hit us. The elite has a chance to attack us for four. But if we can get a plus two or a double on this, we will kill them. Minus two is just about the worst option. So now the scoundrel, I think, is going to get attacked. No. Nope. We'll reduce that down. Take three. They get retaliated against. These guys move. Back to the top. They keep their retaliate. That's innate, which is slightly problematic. Um, we could provoking raw to force other things to attack us and then wall of doom to retaliate again. Let's do that in this room. And here, we can attack for four at a range of three. One, two, three. So we're going to hidden daggers top, something else bottom. Not loot two because we want to save that. I guess we could just move five and get to the other side of the room. And they are very fast. So we have a range of three. So if we move to here, one, two, three, one, two, three. So we'll move to here. One, two, three. Skip the last extra piece of movement. Then hidden daggers. We could kill both of these guys. Then... Can't remember what our other guy has selected. Here we go. We were going to retaliate and provoking roar, but for them to have two HP left, we might as well just do a basic attack. So we're going to kill these two guys. Yeah, we're not even going to get to retaliate because they went faster than us, in fact. That is a shame. Uh, you did what now? Oh, we are muddled. They didn't actually attack us. So if we are muddled, a muddled character gains disadvantage on all its attacks. The muddled condition is removed at the end of the afflicted character's next turn. Well, we still want to attack this thing. So we'll add one to all of our attacks this round. And then attack for two. I'm actually going to take this potion first. Then attack here. We could take advantage. And I'm going to do this because we're only taking long rests during this scenario. And this gets tapped when we use it and untapped when we long rest. So we'll do that. And I think advantage and disadvantage just cancels out to a straight one card pull. 
and we still miss. That's so annoying. Uh, we end the brute's turn, we're back to the top. <coughs> Excuse me. Right, this guy is disarmed, so they can't attack us. We have spare dagger, so we could kill this one with spare dagger. And then move away. Probably just move four. And then do we have we have throwing knives attack two at a range of three. One, two, three. So if we're throwing knives and then we need something on the bottom. Venom shift for a move five to bust into the room. Right there on slow initiative. We are attacking the opposite sides of one another so we don't suffer from retaliate. space clearly more suited to the rat-like vermlings into a large chamber full of rubble and vermling miners on high alert towards the back of the chamber a man in a dark robe cracks a whip and begins spitting orders at the miners who turn their pickaxes away from the stone walls and toward you right this is the ornate chest that we need to get to and if we want to loot it at a range of two, we would need to be where they are stood, unfortunately. Uh, they're going to move three and attack for five. One, two, three. So one, one, two, three. So if we don't want to be attacked by this guy, we need to be fairly far away. We could still add our Boots of Striding. Because I really would like to prefer to not miss out on the movement we're about to have. This guy won't come round to this trap. Damage zero, stun. Moving for three, attacking for five and eight. Base attack strength is equal to the number of Vermling scouts present. Interesting. Well, I only count four, not five. Oh, there's one there. And that one is elite. They're all, these three are elites on this side. So maybe we start to try and kill them first. The hound is up. Take zero damage from that. Thank you. Right, unfortunately, we cannot attack this thing with a regular attack. Although we can move four and then ranged spare dagger at it, right? Spare dagger has a range of three, so this is one, two, three away. That's good. We take two damage there. Two damage there. This is a bad time. Three damage here. That's good. And then the Merciless, Merciless Overseer moves for three. Uh, Merciless Overseer is not an elite enemy, is it? Merciless Overseer, monster. Base stats 18, movement 3, attack 3, modifiers, immune to wound, immune to disarm, immune to curse, immune to stun. 
current turn conditions innate it doesn't have the spikes and it doesn't say elite at the end of its name so if we took a sh uh, if we took a short rest we would lose our straggler but in doing that we might be able to kill this guy with fatal advance immediately and I think that's worth missing out on our extra only long rests in this situation. Fatal Advance is the one we want to definitely keep. So we want a basic move two that's fast. Provoking Raw will do fine. Then Fatal Advance. Then over here we just want to kill as much stuff as we can as fast as possible or move away as fast as possible. We can go invisible. And then move three. Right, this is where we learn if this actually works or not. Is it because it's a shield they're a boss monster? Oh, they are. It's not a basic circle or a spiky one. It's a shield, which means they're an elite. All right, well, we learned something valuable. We'll get a basic attack in. One whole damage. All right, in that case, we're going to go invisible. We're going to move five over to here. Can't poison anything. This is going to suck. What's he doing? All scouts act again. Grim. We have to burn a card. Um, we want trample. We want sweeping blow. I don't think we're going to need grab and go somehow. They miss, which is wonderful. Now, their turn is to have all of the scouts go again. That's five attacks we have to take. Um, I wish we had Wall of Doom up. We'll lose Spare Dagger. Two damage, we can't afford to take that either. Trample, Skewer, Wall of Doom. This is so bad. Wall of Doom is top. Trample is bottom, so we'll lose Skewer. We'll lose Sweeping Blow. All right, we have to lose something else, which is unbelievable. We're going to lose Trample. And keep Wall of Doom for next turn. Although Shield 2 might not do it. So we'll lose Wall of Doom. Now we finally get a turn, which is unbelievable. We only need to kill this guy and loot that. We don't even have to escape. That is worth what what is worth remembering. So we're gonna short rest. Provoking raw. We can lose, we don't care about it. Then we are going to trample and fatal advance. That will be our last turn as Brute. Then over here, we need a short rest. 
That's fine, we'll burn that. Then here, we want to flintlock for attack 5 at a range of 4. We have smoke bomb active. Unfortunately, we've already burnt single out. So flintlock's on bottom. Throwing knives is on top. And alas, we're not going to get to go before the Vermlings do. So, attack this guy for a whole bunch. Then, attack him again. End Scout's turn. What are they doing? Moving and looting. Okay. Well, we're actually going to get a turn then. So, move four, jump, attack through all moved through enemies. And kill one normal adjacent enemy. So, what path are we going to jump through? We have a extra two movement speed. So move one, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. We could hit everything, but we can't kill these guys because they're elites. One, two, three, four, five. Or we could not fatal advance. We could just take a standard attack action against Badman up here. He doesn't have retaliate. So let's do that. Oh my god, minus two, I hate you so much. All right, here then, we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. Then this guy is making everything else take a turn, which is fine because all they did was loot. All right, Brute is exhausted because he didn't have two cards to play. We have Swift Bow, attack for three at a range of four. One, two, three. We need to move one, two, three. This moves five. This attacks three at a range of four. And we act on an initiative of four, so end selection. They're going slowly. We need to kill him. Please don't miss. Oh my god. How? How is this possible? Attack five, poison. No movement. So we're going to move to here. That's the ornate chest that we need to loot. These guys are all attacking but not moving. So now it's back to us. We need to short rest and get back throwing knives. Or swift bow. And special mixture will move us three. Um, do we want this? We could loot stuff as we move. No, let's just burn it. Uh, no. Redraw. There goes throwing knives. So, 
Swiftbow has attack three at a range of four. One, two, three, four. We need to move forward one step. So we're going to flanking strike just because as much as we could special mixture that's initiative 33 i'd rather act on an initiative of four move five and then with swift bow attack for three at a range of four against the merciless merciless overseer summon vermling scout move two attack one at a range of three problem is we might kill this guy and not make it to the end of the turn then i think we lose if that happens so this is attack three at a range of four. One, two, three, four. So we need to move in just one, I think. Attack three at a range of four. One, two, three, four. We need to move in one. So we can just do that. Then attack him, hope he dies. He is dead. All of our quests are done. These guys are still going to take turns, though. Burn a card. We don't have cards to burn. We receive... Uh, we can burn two discarded cards. We need this guy to miss. Oh my god, we were so close. We were one miss off. I'm so mad. I'm so mad. We will return to the map. Like, the draws are just so punishing at every wrong moment. Every wrong moment. Admittedly, I made the massive mistake thinking I could... <laughs> insta kill the boss with a touch of a finger but next time we will level brutus up and we will probably have another crack at that because i think we can do that one in any case thank you ever so much for watching if you're enjoying the series please do consider subscribing or hitting that like button if you have as terrible random luck generation as i do please do let me know down in the comments otherwise i'll see you in the next one cheers